So we're back here with Word Focus. I'm going to share with you some points uh, from the Sunday message. And I'm really excited about this because it actually teaches us and tells us that our journey with God is one of excitement and adventure. It's never passive. It's always active. So I'll begin with what Pastor Paul mentioned from his preaching last Sunday. He said, when God speaks, faith comes. When we obey, faith grows. So growing in faith means that faith is a journey. It's not a destination. It's not the end result. It's actually a journey that we take. So if we look at the life of Abraham, which we're going to look at in summary right now, we see that his life illustrates a journey of faith. And his journey wasn't perfect at all, which is good news for us because we are not perfect people. Abraham's journey had failures, had weaknesses, times where he doubted, times where he feared, times where he, you know, forgot God's promises, to where God had to remind him, you know, in several different chapters in the book of Genesis, the promise that he made to Abraham. So we can see that this journey of faith of Abraham was not perfection, you know, but it was a journey where through it all, he trusted God and he was called a friend of God in this process. And he's also called the father of faith. So Romans 4, 16 in the New Living Translation says this. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. So this verse says that when we have a promise from God, we are certain to receive it if we have faith like Abraham. So what is faith like Abraham's? So now we want to know what that is, right? What did the faith that he walked in look like? So I'm going to bring you to Hebrews chapter 11 from verses 8 to 12, then 17 to 19. And there are four things from this passage that tells us, that can tell us what faith looks like as taken from Abraham's journey. So number one, the first thing that we need to understand about faith, the person of faith obeys God even when he does not know where he is going. Hebrews 11 verse 8 says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. My goodness, look at that. So when Abraham left Haran, he left Ur with his father. And after that, from Haran, that's where God called him in Genesis chapter 12. So God called him, but he had no idea where he called him. Only God knew about the details. So can you imagine God giving you a blank piece of paper? like a piece of paper, and it says, this is my will for you. It is good. It is perfect, acceptable. Wow, yay. Then you look at it, and there you go. It's blank. There's nothing there. And then you have to sign your name on it. But you know what? The will of God involves committing yourself first to the person of God before you ever discover his plan. I think that is so important in our journey of faith. If we are to live a life of faith, we must commit to who God is in our lives. We must be settled with his character. He is faithful. He's loving. He's generous. He's kind. He's patient. He's forgiving. You know, he, he's, uh, his love is enduring and faithful. Can you imagine going on a journey with that kind of a person? So you know what? If we know that God will never leave us, he will never forsake us, he loves us no matter what, he is patient, I would say yes to a journey with a person like that. Because I know that even if I fail, even if I fall, he's not going to leave me. He's still going to walk with me. So first thing, we might not know where we are going, but we know the one who we are going to journey with. And you know what? We even have more to stand on than Abraham. Because at that time when Abraham was called, he came from a family of idol worshipers. He came from a country that was pagan in its culture. So he really had no background about God, but he said yes. But we know God from his word and we know his character. And so even if we don't know where we are going, we know the one who we are going to journey with. Amen. The second thing, the person of faith obeys God, even when he does not know when God will fulfill his promises. So Hebrews 11, 9 says, By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he waited 
for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So what does to wait mean? It means to be stationary in readiness or expectation. It means to look forward confidently and expectantly. You're watchful. So waiting is actually an active word. It's not a passive thing. Waiting is preparing your heart for when God, you know, brings in the fulfillment of that promise. It is being ready to serve. It is knowing that God is working behind the scenes even when we don't see what's going on in the natural. That's what waiting is all about. Go with me to Isaiah 40, verse 31 in the Amplified. It says, but those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. So in the waiting, you're not going to go weary. In the waiting, you're not going to grow tired. And it says here, you will renew your strength while you wait. Why? Because again, faith is a journey and you need strength for the journey. And it is in the waiting where God is preparing you for your destination. It is in the waiting where God is preparing you for full the fulfillment of the promise. Because, you know, we might not be ready for it yet. We might see it, but we might not be ready for it. And in the waiting, God prepares us. Our character is being developed. Amen? So waiting is good. So even if you don't know when, just know that God is preparing you for something good. So the third thing, the person of faith obeys God even when he does not know how God will fulfill his promises. So Hebrews 11 verse 11 says, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. My goodness, can you imagine being past the age and God promising a son to you? It's like, how? But you know what? When God gives instructions, he doesn't give everything all at once. He leaves certain details out. Why? Because in the uncertainty of things, that's where faith comes in. Uncertainties provide room for faith to move. And so if you know everything about your life, you don't really need faith, right? But when you don't know how it's going to happen, that's the excitement. Let me tell you one thing. You might not know how it's going to happen. That's not your job. Your job is to believe. That's all we need to do. And it's up to God to fulfill the promise. Hallelujah. All you need to know is that God is able. He's able and he's willing to do it. So you know what? Enjoy the journey and leave the timing to God. So when you put your faith out there, you allow God to show up and do amazing things in your life. So don't worry about the how. Just know that God is able to do it. And then the fourth thing, the person of faith obeys God even when he does not know why God calls for great sacrifice from him. So Hebrews eleven seventeen by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said in Isaac, your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from which he also received him in a figurative sense. So it doesn't make sense. Here is a promised son that God said in Isaac, you know what? All your seed shall be called. And then all of a sudden God says, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac. So Abraham was like, why is that? But you know what? He had so much trust because of his journey of faith, because he had already journeyed with God. He knew that God was going to keep his promise no matter what. He could not understand why God was asking it of him, but he obeyed anyway. And do you know what? That made the way for covenant. Because when Abraham was willing to offer Isaac, at the same time, it was like God was willing to offer Jesus Christ. That's covenant. So that is why. So sometimes we might not understand, but our understanding is not necessarily required for our obedience. We just need to believe. And you know what? In your journey of faith, I believe with all my heart that from where you started to where you're going, you would have grown tremendously in faith and you will find yourself doing things that you thought you could never do. Why? Because when you say yes in the beginning, he'll bring you through to the end. And what he started in you, he will surely finish in your life. So that is what a journey of faith looks like. I pray that you are all blessed.
God bless you all.